everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a complete stamp concrete patio. How I pour it, how I finish it, how I stamp it, everything. So if you watch the whole video, you'll get to see the whole package. Now what I'm doing here is I'm putting the forms up. This is a 4 inch thick patio. It's 18 feet by 12 feet. And I'm just using 2x4s here for my forms. So I'm getting my 2x4s all screwed together right where they need to go. Using uh, my DeWalt drill driver with the deck screws to screw everything together. Now I'm finding the center. They want this patio centered right on that back door. So I'll measure down center and then I'll go 9 feet each way. So I'll be exactly right in the center and I'll be 18 feet wide and 12, and 12 feet out away from the building. So once I get my, my two nine foot sides over there, I'll pin them right where they need to go so they don't move. And now I'm checking my square. So I'm getting my diagonal. And I want to make sure my diagonal is exactly the same both ways. And then I'll know my, my pad is right square. Then I can pin those two outside corners. So I'll get two pins in each corner to hold that so it doesn't move. And now I'm running my string. And what my string does is it gives me something to go by to, to pin the middle of the forms to make sure the middle of the forms are perfectly straight. So I just put a, I put a screw on the top of the board and I tie the string to the screw. And I like running the string in the center of the board. Some, some people put it on the, the front edge, which is fine. I just prefer putting it in the center. Now I can get those metal pins in there. Those metal pins go into to good hard pack gravel you know pretty easy a lot easier than a wooden pin would would work so if you're not using those metal pins with the holes through them I highly recommend getting some of those they're about two dollars and fifty cents a piece but you'll have them for years and you can use them over and over again And I was just checking my level down from that side and to make sure that I was about the same each way. I will end up setting up my laser eventually and setting these forms right to grade, but I wanted to be a certain distance down from that door so when they put their steps in, you know, all the steps are the same. So I'm using rebar in this one for reinforcement. I'm going to tie a mat of rebar in at two foot on center. I always put fiber mesh in the concrete too. I'm using my Husqvarna quick cut saw. That's probably about the easiest way to cut rebar right there. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check that out. That thing works really good for cutting. Now I'll just straighten in my, my bars and I'll put my crossbars on and we'll get this mat all tied together. I use what, what are called wire ties in a yo-yo to tie the rebar together. The wire ties have little loops on each end so you can just slide it under the rebar and bend it up then put the yo-yo through it and spin the yo-yo and it ties the rebar together nice and tight. You can see those wire ties come in a little roll. They come different lengths. I'm using six inch ties. I could probably use four inch on this, but that's all I had was six inch. So I got the mat all tied together. Now I'm checking my level with my my laser there. I use that Topcon RLH5B. I'll have that down in the description too guys. That's the if you guys have watched any of my other videos you know that's the the laser I recommend for doing concrete work. We're pitching this 
sloping this away from the house about an inch and a half. So when the, when it rains, obviously the rain will, you know, go away from the house, but the roof line drips on this too. So it's going to see a lot of water. We just want to make sure the water doesn't puddle on it. I'm real fussy about my grades and my pitches. I want to make sure everything's perfect. So I, I usually double check everything. Now I'm getting everything right screwed into place so it doesn't move. And now we're getting the concrete poured. We're using a 4,000 PSI concrete with a 3.8 stone. It's called a P-stone. So it's a little bit smaller stone than, than a regular floor mix. And I like the 3.8 stone because it stamps a little bit easier. Leaves a little better impression. Now it's about 90 degrees out here today and it's about noontime when we're pouring this so the sun is beating right on us. It's really, really hot right here. And the concrete had about a 45 minute ride in the truck to get here so even the concrete was pretty hot. So we're really hustling to get this stuff down. It's, it's setting up on us as we're as we're pouring it and it might be kind of hard to tell in the video but it was setting up on us we we really needed to hustle to get this down or we weren't going to get it down so i'm getting my edges magged i'm magging them to that chalk line and then i'm going to mag them right to the top of the board and then we'll get this stuff screeded Again, this is going to be a stamp concrete patio. You're going to get to see how we stamp this too. It's going to be an ashlar slate pattern. So stick around. Make sure you watch the whole video to see how we stamp it. And then I'm also going to show you how we wash it, how we saw cuts in it, and how we apply the concrete sealer. And then what kind of sealer I prefer for stamp concrete. So that's all coming up at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned to check that out. So I'm screeding the concrete with my daughter there. That's Tia. Tia is in college and so is the other girl, Abby. So this is their summer jobs. But they're really good workers. They, it, you know, they, they could really pull their own weight. They could do, you know, just about anything that one of us could do other than, other than not having the experience on some of the stuff. I mean, they could do the work just fine. All right, so I'm I'm hurrying to get the rest of this thing screeded because I know that I can just tell by the feel of the concrete how quick it's setting up that as soon as I get this down and bolt loaded, I'm going to have to get right back on it and start stamping. I'm not going to have any time to wait around and, and take a break. So T is screeding right off top of the board. I'm wet screeding over there with my with my aluminum uh, magnesium straight edge. The straight edge we're using, it's a 14 foot straight edge. It's really lightweight. I mean, it, that thing's easy to use. Nice and straight. I've had that thing for years. I've probably had that thing for 10 years. We got a little bit too much concrete in there, about a half a wheelbarrow too much, so we had to pull it out over the edge. I had to pick that up later. So I'm going to get this bowl floated nice and quick, as fast as I can. Like I said, that concrete's setting up fast. A little bit faster than normal because of the, the temperature and because the concrete was a little hot when it showed up. A good concrete temperature, I mean normal concrete temperature is in the 60s, like 65 degrees. When you can feel the concrete when the concrete's coming down the chute and you touch it and you can actually feel it's warm then you know you know you want to hustle to get that stuff down it should feel cool to the touch in the in the chute when it's coming down the concrete chute but it's hard to keep it cool when it's inside that that mixer drum you know when it's 90 degrees out and the sun's beating on it 
So it's really important that you know what you're doing on days like today. That's why it's best to pour the concrete first thing in the morning. But this is our second pour of today. So we poured we poured a big house floor and I left Luke and Darren on that to finish it. And, you know, because we've been battling rain like everybody, we had to come up and get this thing done. So this was our second pour of the day. So I got Abby and Tia putting the edge on it just around that outside edge. I'm going out front of the house and getting my truck with the stamps in it and backing my truck around back. So we don't have to lug the stamps too far. We had just enough time to to go out there and get the truck and get back here. Now I'm magging out their, their edge mark, but I'm leaving the rounded part, you know, right by the board. And I'm getting right back on this thing now. It's ready to go. The good thing about having the house there was I had a starting point, an easy starting point to go by. So, and what I mean by that is, you know, I have basically square stamps and I have a smooth edge with that foundation wall so I could put the stamp right up against the foundation wall. I'm using my, my roller there to get some texture up against the wall and it just makes stamping up against that wall a little bit easier. You can see I got that, that little space, so I'm using, I have to use that really flexible stamp to get the grooves in there. And if I already have a little bit of texture there, it just makes doing that a little bit easier. T is going around the outside edge with the roller, putting some texture on that outside edge. I'm getting all my stamps laid out. I have about, I have about 10 or 11 of these, so I'm getting them all laid out. The different colors have a little different pattern to them. I'm using an ashlar slate pattern here, so that way the the pattern doesn't just keep repeating itself over and over again. You have different rock patterns or slate patterns for each color of stamp. That release agent I'm throwing out there, that's a charcoal colored release agent. The concrete had a darker gray color in it when it came out of the truck. And we're using like a black release agent. That release agent does a couple things. It helps keep the stamps from sticking to the surface of the concrete, number one. And then it also adds a little bit of secondary color to the surface. So, as you can see, I'm kind of tapping those stamps. I'm, I'm tamping the impression of the stamp into the concrete, which also tamps some of that color of release into the surface of the concrete. So when I come back and wash this thing, I'm not rinsing all that release off the surface. Some of it's gonna get pressed right into the surface, which, which gives you your antiquing kind of two-tone colored effect when you're all done and sealed. So these stamps kind of go together only one way. They have a notch in them, if you can see that notch. Um, so they only go one way. You gotta make sure that you're going the same way with the stamp every time you set it down. I get I get my stamps from uh, Marshalltown now. If you uh, if you want to get some concrete stamps or if you want to get into stamping, you know I have a link down in the description that goes right to Marshalltown's website and has all their tools in it. So you can check out that and Marshalltown gave me a special discount for you guys. So if you use the discount coupon code EAC, if you go to Marshalltown's website and check out, use that EAC in the discount code, you know, you'll get 10% off all your tools. Plus they ship them to you for free. You can see the pattern in the background there, how it's coming out an Ashler slate. This is a really cool pattern. It's one of our favorites. We do this one a lot. You can also see how that one flexible stamp works. That one's a little thinner than those other, those other stamps are pretty rigid. They won't flex like that. So I have a couple of those flexible ones. One's a, a blue one, one's a black one. And we use those when we're going up against a building like that or up against a pole or anything that's sticking up that we can't lay the rigid ones flat on. You gotta use that really flexible one. 
I'm tamping away just about as fast as I can go, about as fast as one person can go. I wouldn't have wanted to do anything any bigger than this on as, as hot as it is today. This thing's a little over 200 square feet and I had all I could do to get it down myself with all the experience that I have. Like I said, it's about 90 degrees out here today. It felt like a sauna out behind this house. We're getting this stamped, getting it tamped. Making sure the impression is going into the concrete really good. Sometimes I'll I'll pick that stamp up a little bit and I'll look under it to make sure I got good impression before I completely pick it up. You really got to know what you're doing when you stamp concrete. I mean, you really need a little bit of experience. I wouldn't recommend just going out, renting some stamps and, and trying to stamp your first one on your own without a little bit of experience. I mean, watching these videos is good and you can learn that way. But if you're going to try something on your own, I would try something smaller than this for sure. Maybe even half this size before I try something any with any size to it. All right, so we got it all stamped. Now this is the next day. I like to come back the next day if I can early, as the earlier the better, and get my saw joints cut in this. I'm gonna cut one, as you can see, down the middle the, the long way and then two the other way. If I can, I, I like to try to follow as many of the joints and the stamps as possible when I saw, so the saw cuts don't really stick out too much. That's pretty easy to do in a pattern like this. I'm using my electric soft cut saw today. That's the that's the 390. I have two of these. And I also have the soft cut X150. That's the gas powered one. It's a little bigger than these. So I mean if you're doing concrete work, you should have one of these saws, either the electric one or the 150. It just makes sawing concrete so much easier in. You know, if you're doing other types of flat work, if you're doing concrete floors, you can saw your floors the same day you don't have to come back the next day but with stamp concrete we like coming back the next day that way you, it leaves a really really nice clean saw cut it's hard to saw the same day on stamp concrete without leaving some type of mark from the saw so we always do it the next day that saw goes down there about an inch and a quarter when I have a brand new blade so that's that's all you need to do on a four inch slab like this. All right now I'm brooming off my dust, getting as much of that dust off as I can before I start washing. We're gonna use a, a pressure washer here and with a fan tip on it, getting rid of the forms first so the water will run off a little easier. And I like using Dawn dish detergent. You can use Simple Green too, but the Dawn dish detergent really cuts that release agent and makes it a little easier to rinse off. If I don't take those boards off, then the water kind of beads up on the edge a little bit and just, just makes it a little harder to rinse. So definitely easier to take your forms off. Plus your forms will get all wet and kind of kind of messed up by the release agent and get really dirty. There by myself working today. This was a Saturday. So it was an early Saturday morning I got here to do this. I just like scraping my boards a little bit, get some of that excess concrete off the board so we can use them over and over again. You know, if you're in business for yourself, you just want to make sure your form, you keep your forms clean, you can use them, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 times over and over again without having to buy new ones. So you want to keep your cost down, keep your profit up. So there, there I am, I got that Dawn dish detergent, mixing it in five gallons of water. Get 
can see I'm in the shade. That's why I got here early this morning. I didn't want to have to do this in the sun. Definitely a lot cooler when it's in the shade. The water's not going to just evaporate on the top of that thing. Most any pressure washer will do on this, you just, you know, when you're washing these things, you don't want to get the tip too close to the surface of the concrete. Otherwise, you'll leave lines in the concrete. You could even damage the concrete. I mean, it's only a day old, it's 24 hours old. So, you know, just keep your tip about 16, 18 inches above the surface and you'll be fine. I'm rinsing off any what little of that release residue I got on the house. It, Pretty much comes right off pretty easy. If it doesn't, you can just take the Dawn dish detergent to it. It'll come right off. So I'm getting most of the res most of the release agent off first before I start washing. This, I mean, the broom will only take so much off. So it's just easier to wash this thing if you get 90% of that release agent off. Then you can use your Dawn and scrub it and get the rest of it off. Some of it, like I said, some of it is going to stay like down in the lower grooves and in the lower parts of the, of the slate. Some of that black release agent is going to stay in there. You'll see that when you see me seal in here pretty soon at the end of the video. Most of the patio will be a dark gray and then you'll see that bl the black highlights. It's going to look really cool. I'll put the I'll put the pressure washer I use down in the description too guys if you know if you're wondering what you should use I'll have the, ex the exact same one I use down in there so I'm taking my five gallons I'm just spreading it over the whole thing and scrubbing it you want to you just want to scrub this thing like you're washing a car you know you don't want any release residue on the concrete when you go to seal it you want all the loose residue off otherwise your sealer won't bond to the concrete and you'll have a failure so this is a really really important step you can't just rinse it you do have to you do have to wash it like see I'm going both ways making sure I scrub it really good especially down in those grooves the release will get built up down in those grooves I want to make sure I get it all out. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure I rinse all that soap residue off. So I'm going to go over this two or three times just to get the soap residue and the loose release I just scrubbed off. Then I'll let it dry out for 24 hours and come back and seal it. Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. We just installed this stamp concrete patio yesterday. It's a ashlar slate pattern. It's got the color smoke, which is U20 on the Butterfield color chart in the concrete. And I used a storm gray release agent. Came out really good. Check it out. So this patio, this one here is 18 by 12. We're gonna, I'm gonna put the water to it today. It's supposed to be really, it's supposed to be about 100 degrees today, so I'm gonna water it all day today. And then we'll take the sprinkler off it tomorrow and come back and put the sealer to it. That's it, guys. You guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sealer to this patio that we just cleaned and washed yesterday, giving it 24 hours. Now we're gonna seal it. First thing I always do is put the leaf blower to it and blow off any dust before I seal, make sure it's good and clean. Hey guys, the sealer I like to use on my stamp concrete is from Foundation Armor, the AR350. 
it's a satin but it gives it a wet look so it'll it'll darken the concrete bring out the color but it does resist any cracking spalling and it's really good for freeze thaw cycles and salt damage so this is the sealer we're using all right so we're all ready to put the sealer to it this is the sprayer i like to use guys this is a stainless steel sprayer the seals in it are really good for a solvent based sealer you can't just use a cheap sprayer because the solvent in the, in the acrylic sealer will just eat out the seals you know ruin the sprayer so this is what we're using here this is the one i recommend using we're going to put two really light coats on this thing that'll be all it needs for now and then we'll be good to go all right so here we go spraying the sealer on you can see how it darkens it up really nice brings out the color we're going to put two coats on the first coat first coat's going to sink in here pretty good See how that really makes the color pop on that. Thank you. 